My name is Sylvester Nijaka, um, and I'm from Austin, Texas. My whole childhood, I loved music. I, w I was always a, a little more excited than my friends whenever we'd watch a movie and there'd be a song or some kind of musical number or something. When I was 11, I had the opportunity to join the band, but I didn't because I didn't want to be seen as a nerd by my friends. So I didn't actually join band until I was 12. Eventually started playing the saxophone and at first it was just something that I, it was fun, like a hobby. I got deeper and deeper into it. And then at some point I decided I wanted to do it for a career. Went to the University of North Texas, studied saxophone and jazz composition. Ended up producing my own records under the name Slide Fifth Ave. Uh, ended up arranging for orchestras and, and, and working in just a bunch of different facets of music that I never thought I would, uh, in addition to playing gigs on saxophone and, and touring the world. And now I'm 36 and I'm still here. Um, and yeah, it's the love of my life. I think the most important thing, my, my basis, my fundamental is tone. Every single day, for at least the first part of my practice session, I just work on my tone. Because saxophone, it's like if you can play all the notes, you can do, uh, you can you can do all kinds of crazy acrobatic things and fly on it. But if you have a, if you have a bad tone, or if it doesn't sound good, if it doesn't pull the listener in, then everything else is is kind of for nothing. So more than anything, the thing that I try and instill in my students is your tone is the most important. At one point in time, jazz was known as like a specifically American thing. Uh, I guess that's where the fusion of the different elements kind of came into play and that's kind of, that's pretty much where it started. Like the fusion of, of uh, African enslaved peoples and their rhythm and then mixed with European harmony and it morphed into jazz and morphed into Afro-Cuban music and all these different things, which is beautiful. Um, but now, I think with the, in the age of the internet and YouTube, there's not so much regional music anymore. Uh, well, there is regional music, but everything is kind of a mix. It's good to study the past. It's good to study those people who came before you um, and just to learn the history of whatever you're doing, uh, whether it be music or art or whatever. It's good to, always good to know the history, but uh, where I stand today is I think that it's most important to push the music forward. Um, and to not, to not have limits on what we think is jazz or what is not jazz. To be honest, the word jazz, yeah, I studied it. It's a program, it's a thing, but w when describing my music, I try to avoid that word because it's limiting, you know? Uh, it's 2022, so I, just, I, I view myself more as a musician than I do as a jazz musician. So yeah, I think, I think the most important is just to have an open mind. That's, that's my vision for jazz music. I, I really enjoy playing with people who have an open mind and take the music um, other places that maybe I wasn't expecting or didn't think about. Um, for me, where I come from, I'm like Aretha Franklin. But then I found when I came to Mexico, not everybody knew who Aretha Franklin was. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. But they're like, yo, do you know Jose Jose? Do you know Gustavo Cerati? Do you know like, and they, they were giving me all this other dope music to check out. So I think it's, a, I think there's an amazing scene here in Mexico City. Um, and I think there's a lot of different people from many different parts of the world here right now. Things bubbling in terms of music because all these different people are just collaborating and coming together. And that's the beautiful thing about music. You know, it brings people together, uh, regardless of your background or, or whatever. Um, so for me, playing music, it's, it's a privilege because first of all, I mean, it's not, it's not the easiest thing. It's not the most glamorous thing. I think a lot of people have this conception of the musician as somebody that just lives in the party all the time. But they don't see you when you're in the practice room eight hours a day, you know, in school, putting in the work and, and, and struggling, you know. They don't see you, they don't see all of the hard parts. So I think a lot of people have this conception of music as this glamorous rock star thing. I mean, yeah, in some cases, but it's something that requires work, hard work and dedication and discipline. And it's a privilege to be able to do it. And I feel like the most successful people that I know understand that. And that's why they're successful because at no point does the work stop. You continually 
you have to keep pushing forward and growing. And that's the part that I think a lot of young musicians don't understand. But I have teachers who are in their 70s and they still practice every single day and they're still searching for something and they still have good days and bad days when they struggle with things. My experience at, at, at Lope has been really nice so far actually. Um, I've actually been surprised by the level of some of the students. I, I heard, sometimes when I come I hear the orchestra rehearsing and I mean, they sound really amazing. And um, I've, I have the good fortune to know a couple of the teachers, um, a couple of the professors really well. And I think that the students are really lucky to have professors who care uh, whether they practice or not um, and who aren't just showing up and it's like, okay, do whatever you want. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to be here and to have the opportunity to to influence these, these young musicians. I mean, it's 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 inspiring for me. It makes me it makes me try harder. It's, it's just been a really enriching experience for me. And, yeah.